but when you really think about it, film and television very much reflects our society. When done right, it allows people to have a voice, it allows people to feel represented. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Kristen, and today we are talking about Netflix's new limited series, Hollywood, from Ryan Murphy and Ian Brennan. This story takes place in post-World War II Hollywood, where actors, filmmakers, writers will do whatever it takes to make it in showbiz. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on Hollywood. There may be some slight spoilers, so you've been warned. Now we all know Ryan Murphy is notorious for casting people in multiple projects, so Hollywood is no exception. We get to see a lot of familiar faces from his past projects, including Darren Criss, Jim Parsons, David Cornsweet, Dylan McDermott, and of course the brilliant Patty Lapone with Laura Harrier, Samara Weaving, and even Queen Latifah, this is definitely a star-studded cast. And I think for the most part, every character really delivers when it comes to the roles that they're given. Hollywood is a revisionist history of what life could have been like, sort of like an alternate Hollywood. As we dive into the ideas of what if we gave people an opportunity, what if we had women in charge, what if we allowed people of color to tell their own stories, what if we accepted people for who they love and didn't make them hide who they really are. And even though this is set in the 1940s, everything that's going on is still very, very relevant to the world that we live in in 2020. Everything from Oscar So White to the Me Too movement. You can really see the parallels. And I think that's why a story like this is so universal because we can see that we even have these same issues now. And what I also found very interesting about this show is that while a lot of it is fictionalized, there are characters and situations and even locations that really happened back in the 1940s. The characters of Rock Hudson and Henry Wilson are real, although their stories are told in this alternate version. The character of Ernie in the gas station that he owns is based off of a real situation and a real guy. We also get to see characters like Anna Mae Wong and Hattie McDaniel who are real African American and Chinese Chinese American movie stars who didn't get the respect that they deserved during their time and this sort of felt like a way to honor them. I especially enjoyed seeing Queen Latifah as Hattie McDaniel and the relationship that she started to form with Camille because we really got to see, you know, these two black women supporting each other, lifting each other up, and just in general the way that they portrayed women in this show was something that I really enjoyed because we got to see them rise up as leaders, they supported each other, they gave other people opportunities. They didn't tear someone down. I think the situation with Avis and Jean was a great example of Avis taking the high road and actually giving this person opportunity versus you know, deciding to ruin their career. And I think that's something that's a little bit different that you might not necessarily see in another show. While a lot of morally questionable things go on in this show, I think a lot of our characters are trying to do the right thing and make a difference. You can see the power that entertainment and film and Hollywood has on the community. I think, you know, you can easily say, well, maybe this is sort of being self-congratulatory and showing, oh, well, this is how much I think Hollywood can change the world. But when you really think about it, film and television very much reflects our society. When done right, it allows people to have a voice, it allows people to feel represented, and that's something that definitely is really important to me. We get to see in the show, especially at the very end, when we see some big successes for a lot of the underdog characters, that, yeah, this, this is like groundbreaking to get this kind of representation or to see yourself on screen or to see someone like you being able to make it and not feel limited. Even some of the other projects that I've reviewed on my channel like Never Have I Ever being led by an Indian character or the half of it a queer love story led by an Asian American and a Hispanic woman. That stuff is still considered groundbreaking in 2020 so I think this show Hollywood really shows that you know, what if we got to do some of those things a little bit sooner? What kind of impact would that have? And I think they don't necessarily fully go all the way there. You know, we get to see a lot of great successes and then the show kind of ends. And we don't necessarily get to see, you know, several years later what is the big impact. But I do think that what the characters built is a big start. Now, while I did enjoy the show, there were some things that did not really work for me, so let's talk about those as well. The biggest issue for me was that I felt like the show actually changed tonally and sort of like in the direction that it was going in between the first three episodes and the last four episodes. They kind of felt like completely different shows and it felt like the first three episodes were really setting up the story but it just kind of took too long and I think that that kind of hurt 
the rest of the season a little bit because a lot of the characters and the development that we could have gotten felt a little bit more limited. You know, there were certain characters like Camille and Claire that I feel like didn't actually get enough time to really dive into their stories. The character of Henrietta also felt sort of like an afterthought. And then when you get to the finale, it just feels like there's certain moments that maybe we didn't earn, that we didn't really get to the point where we should be there yet. I would say the biggest example of that is the relationship between Claire and Jack. It just felt like it kind of came out of nowhere and didn't have the build-up, especially as we get into the moment in the finale between them. Also, in the first three episodes, you know, as we're setting up the story, we're following a lot of, like, seedy, abusive moments that can be a lot, that can be kind of uncomfortable, and then, all of a sudden, when we get to episode four, the tone completely switches to this more, everything's coming together, we're going for our dream, you know, happy ending sort of story. I thought it was just very jarring, and, you know, I think it made the first three episodes kind of hard to watch, and to be honest, I almost stopped watching, but I had heard that after those three episodes, you really start getting into, okay, we're making the film now, we're trying to give everyone an opportunity, we're trying to change the face of Hollywood, and that's really the story that I was interested in seeing a bit more. I think what was addressed in the first three episodes, you know, it's important to shed light on. Those kinds of abuses continue even now. We don't necessarily see the people that abuse their power get what they deserve, which I think may be a little bit of an injustice to this story. And while I did enjoy the second half of the season more, I will say that this is something that I've noticed in a lot of Ryan Murphy shows, is that everything sort of gets a big happy ending. You know, I think we see that in several episodes of American Horror Story, um, you know, where it's just everything kind of comes together so seamlessly to the point where it's kind of unrealistic, which I think is kind of funny in that the character Henry says that about the end of the film that they're working on as well. And I think that kind of reflected the situation with this show as a whole. It gets to the point where it's just like this idealistic fantasy that everything works out perfectly and everyone gets what they want. And at the same time, when you really think about it, you know, all these characters that got their dreams to come true, they're all beautiful, they're all skinny, they're all perfect looking. And so I do think that that kind of took a little bit away from the story in that we're following all of these perfect characters, getting what they want, and so it does kind of feel a little bit shallow in a way. One of the episodes that I really enjoyed was seeing the screen tests, although what really rubbed me the wrong way a little bit was seeing Claire kind of throw her audition. I get that it's an opportunity to give someone else a chance, but I feel like it would have been more impactful if everyone worked the hardest that they could and then you got your opportunity because you were the best, not because someone else purposely like let you have it in a way. But something that I think could have helped this show just a little bit more is maybe cutting down the first like three episodes that are more of like an introduction to what's going on and focus a little bit more on establishing some of these other characters that we didn't get as much time with. I just think that like with the tonal shifts of the show and just not getting enough time with specific characters, I think that kind of was a little bit detrimental. So was Hollywood a perfect show? I don't think so. Um, I will say Ryan Murphy projects are a lot of times hit or miss for me. Sometimes I think they're really, really, really solid and sometimes I'm just like, where is this going? I think this show had a little bit of both in that. When it comes down to it, I actually really had a lot of fun watching Hollywood. I think especially as we start getting into the, those more hopeful aspects and really seeing the film come together that they're working on, those were some of my favorite parts of the show. Yes, it does get a little like cheesy, like, oh, everything comes together so easily, but it still has this sort of like romantic, rose-colored glasses kind of vibe. I think that we can really see that there are people abusing their powers and that's not cool and that there are people that are able to stand up that want to be good people and make a difference and make a change and change the face of Hollywood and I think that that's a very relevant story. How is it that it's 2020 and Halle Berry is the only black woman to ever win an Oscar for a leading role? Why is it that women of color are still resorted to playing maids and slaves and you know seductresses and you know, that's something that's still very prevalent now. And how is it that it's 2020 and we're still dealing with these same struggles that they were dealing with in the 1940s? People are being more conscious about changing that, but there's still a long way to go. But I do think the ideas of changing the face of Hollywood, being more inclusive, giving women more power, and just how far you can go when you have a team of people together who really believe in something, who really believe in a strong message, is really important. It is a fun Hollywood adventure with a good message that I think is nice to watch right now. If you guys like this one, you can check out more of my Netflix reviews right over here, and I'll catch you in my next video. See ya.